On June 8, 1959, the U.S. Navy submarine USS Barbera launched a nuclear-capable turbojet cruise missile towards a naval base in Mayport, Florida. After 100 miles and just over 20 minutes in the air, it would deliver its payload. Not a 4,000-pound warhead like it was originally designed to hold, Here we go, boys. but instead, a bundle of thousands of letters. In this missile age, why not missile mail? This was the United States' first and last official missile mail delivery. That Monday morning missile launch may not have changed mail delivery forever, but it wasn't intended to. It was a stunt. Each of the 3,000 letters packed into the Regulus missile's fuselage was actually from Postmaster General Arthur A. Summerfield, addressed to prominent Americans like President Dwight D. Eisenhower, and packaged in commemorative envelopes. Still, Summerfield was optimistic. He insisted the delivery was of historic significance to the peoples of the entire world, and that before man reaches the moon, mail will be delivered within hours from New York to California, to England, to India, and to Australia by guided missile. The first official missile mail in the United States may not have happened until 1959, but the premise had already been tested quite thoroughly, though with unguided rockets. A 1934 issue of Popular Mechanics highlights the first regular and consistent rocket mail service as having been in Austria. The rockets would launch at 65 degrees and power upwards until they ran out of fuel, at which point the letter case, quite literally an asbestos-lined container with an outer coating of more asbestos, would float down to the destination below by parachute, having covered a handful of miles. Meanwhile, in the United States, things were not going quite as well. In February of 1936, a prospective rocket airplane attempted to take a payload from Greenwood Lake, New York to Hewitt, New Jersey, bypassing a pesky frozen lake in the process. There were some problems. Still, there was success to be found in the failure, as Popular Mechanics pointed out in a May 1936 issue. From the first flight, it appears the principle of the reaction motor is basically sound, although it can stand improvement. By the time 1959 rolled around, it had. That launch from the USS Barbero deemed the first official missile mail in part to distinguish it from incidents like the one at Greenwood Lake, proved that the so-called rocket airplane had come a long way. The Regulus cruise missile, which launched the Postmaster's 3,000 letters, was first tested in March 1951 and weighed nearly seven tons with two booster rockets that could throw off 33,000 pounds of thrust, giving it a range of 500 nautical miles and a max speed of just under Mach 1. It was quite the rocket compared to those that had preceded it. And so, the first official missile mail was a resounding success, one with an added bonus. It allowed a Cold War United States to slyly show off its missile might to the world. Ultimately, the downfall of missile mail wasn't a matter of its impossibility, but its impracticality. It turns out, delivering mail with airplanes is just way cheaper. By the launch of the first official missile mail, a proof of concept that could have seen letters taken across the Atlantic in a matter of hours, airplane-based airmail was already capable of delivering letters in a single day. The slight improvement missiles might have offered just wasn't worth the inflated cost, and the first official missile mail would also be the last.